You're watching Escape at Hood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. On this week's show, we're talking about head stacking, things that fit in a Coke can, and how to make a dent in the universe. Yes, we wanted to know what was something oh, awesome that happened to you today, it's uh, and it's been good. You guys... Playgrounds, biking... Napping in the sunshine. It's Christy, I would totally... Uh, uh, even, you know, this isn't necessarily uh, spring, but Alyssa saying, uh, trudging. trudging through the wet snow with the fam, laughing, throwing snowballs, falling, talking, just being together... That's what it's all That's about. That's awesome. Uh, and the fact that it's not like, you know, 20 below, that trudging through the wet snow is a little bit easier and more manageable to do. And then there's cake pops. Can't go wrong with cake pops. For the win. Right. And cake pops and nachos for the win always from uh, Scottsdale there. So, yep. yeah. Thanks for being here tonight, you guys. We're excited for another and fun and adultitis fighting show. And I see Wes actually is fighting adultitis big time today. Getting your first Wonder and Whimsy Society package. So That's con awesome. congrats on that arriving. I mean, I should say congrats to the USPS. Who yes. Is, uh, <laughs> I, it's a uh, major accomplishment that you received that. <laughs> I was on the phone with American Express today because I saw that I, uh, usually we pay our uh, bill every month and I get my bill. And usually, there's a big, I hope. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, we always do, except this month because... Something happened with the USPS where my check, which was written a week before it was due, mm -hmm. didn't get there. So, Holy nightmare. <laughs> kudos to American Express, who took off my late fee and interest charge, gave me a, a little bit of a break. So, uh, just this is true those adulting, annoying guys. things of life. True adulting. Yes. I talk about adultitis when you have to call a credit card company and try to get them to waive the fee that you didn't deserve. So. Yeah. Fun times, but Fun times. it sounds like it ended well. It did. Yeah. All's well, that ends well. <laughs> but uh, we need to start talking about uh, what's going on yes. around here. What we gotta, is going we'll see, on? haven't done this segment in a while. <laughs> okay, you guys. Um, what <sighs> what's going world? on here? What? What is this? This is a picture that I pulled off of the interwebs, <laughs> and uh, I literally have no idea what's going on, but I'm hoping you will tell me. So take a good look at this picture. This Put in the comments what you think. It's kind of disturbing. What you think is happening here. But having sisters, it's not dis as much disturbing as it is relatable. <laughs> well, I, that's the first question. Are these, these are all ladies, females? It seem to I be. Think, I, I, would, I see a lot of dresses. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, did it, what are, is that like a little ottoman that they're they're stacked their heads on i can't that's tell i thought it was they a, have to figure out a tree stump us, perhaps know? i'm like i don't think it's a tree stump uh but uh i am looking forward to seeing what uh, you think now wes love here. where wes is leading it a human zipper <laughs> that is very good that is so creative yes <laughs> so as you guys think about this and start to you know form some things to share in the comments you know we like to talk about what's going on with us so um you see kelsey's by the way a no. game of telephone oh, oh. Pretty, pretty good <laughs> yeah i love it that is a game that is unfortunate you know that is not a covid game you need a lot of people to play and yeah. you have to be close yeah so that's, that's definitely it. not social distancing yeah so this reminded me of that picture looks like it was taken in the Victorian age, which reminds me of the Victrola mm. that we recently yes. purchased for our new home. Um, we bought an old record player, old looking record player. And this thing is awesome, you guys. This will be like an Amazon review. But I mean, seriously, because it not only plays records, it plays CDs, it plays cassette tapes, it goes, it does our Bluetooth for our phones. Um, hello, we have like every option now. And the speakers are pretty decent. If you're like super like if you're an audiophile yeah. 
It's probably not for you. An autophile? Yeah. Is that what they call that? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, it's good for us because, you know, it just amplifies in one or two rooms. But um, but it's been really, really fun. And we had the whole, like, we need records now moment. Yes. And being a, the romantic that I am in, in the terms of everything has to be perfect. Uh, <laughs> you guys I know had to it, order right? yeah. I, The first record I bought was Abbey Road by the Beatles. Because Here Comes the Sun was a very crucial uh, song in the purchasing of this home. Yes, it kind of um, it kind served of, as kind of a sign a couple like three times, honestly, um, through the process of us trying to get this house, um, which was a long process. It had a lot of ups and downs. We've mm -hmm. kind of shared a little bit of the story, but there was a, about a month where we didn't have the house that we after we tried, and then it came back around. So. Um, the, the, here comes the sun kind of served as one of those signs that like something is happening. This is, there's something to this. Um, so that was the first song we played on the record player in the house. It was. And, uh, it also has something to do with the new series I'm working on of paintings. Um, that's the only hint I'm going to give you, but we'll be sharing more soon, but here comes yes. the sun. Is, Heck yes, uh, I did. Crucial inspiration to a series of paintings that'll be uh, coming out of my studio here. So yeah, um, so that's a little bit about what's going on with us. Oh, and by the way, the, we've been hitting the thrift shops and getting some epic, epic records. And both sets of parents have now contributed from their collections. So now we have like more than we know what to do with. So this is exciting. It's but good, good all right, times. what's going on in this photo? Well, head stacking, obviously. <laughs> Uh, Tracy it, says monkey pile. My siblings and oh. I would always do this at Halloween. Oh. Really? Wow. Like, I, now I need to see a picture right? of that. We've got to have a picture of that. Like in this, I have a follow-up question for Tracy, like in this way, or would you pile your bodies on top of each other? Cause I've seen that, but I haven't seen the heads only. Yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's right? pretty good. Uh, Carolyn, it's a cuddle puddle. That's, that's a good, good way. <laughs> Uh, Love it. <laughs> sure, pillows weren't cheap in those days. <laughs> That's a lot of feathers, right? Uh, Jody, yeah. this is Jenga with sisters. Oh, uh, pull like one that. out. Which one are you going to pull yep. out? See they if pull, they all fall. <laughs> pull the bottom one out. <laughs> yeah, Jen is on the same page. Human Jenga. Nice. Uh, Paul says they're demonstrating chakras. Nice. Oh, my gosh. Cindy, definitely escaping adulthood before they had TV. <laughs> Like that's, that. that's a very simple answer, yeah, we right? We made up our own fun back in right. the old days, right? That's so true. Family totem pole. Nice. <laughs> that's that's uh, Helen, what's so exciting about Siamese twins when you see our family? <laughs> it does good. have that view. I, I kind of have that going on too, Helen, where you're like, what? Is this all one body? What am I looking at? Here's a good one. Steve, that's the last time I request the song, Do You Hear What I Hear? <laughs> I don't know. Do you? Do you? Do I? I don't know. That's good. Ah, that's awesome. Can anyone hear the creak in this floor? There's something in the floor. Uh, uh, this is going uh, a much different direction yeah, than I thought. I, I love yeah. it. Hypnotist was the special guest at the ladies' retreat. So that's good. Uh, Tracy, uh, responding to your question, says whole body monkey pile. Okay, so that's what I would assume with the yeah. monkey pile, but not that that makes it any less amazing. I mean, lay, laying on top of each other. <laughs> We should try that sometime, yeah. but you get to go on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then Steve, physical therapy meets group therapy. Oh, that's good. Uh, this is Very probably nice. what is uh, ahead of us when the pandemic is in the rearview mirror, is we'll all be so excited to be oh with each gosh. other. This will be the there new trend. There will be trend. no more personal space ever, you know, yes. be like six centimeters. <laughs> yeah, that'll be, uh, that'll be Oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. Where did you find these We're pictures, by the way. Uh, I have sources. I, I know a guy, <laughs> and by a guy I mean me, who's up late Google. at night googling weird stuff. I don't I don't even know if I want to know what you put in Google to find them. That's that's the, uh, the magic. It's not right there. It's not as easy as you'd think. <laughs> I typed in pictures for our what's going on segment. Nothing. 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 Comes nothing, up. nothing good. Yeah. Uh, uh, so good, you guys. And now, a word from our sponsors. All right, guys. We had a really cool event the other day. And I have to tell you that one of the things that is so exciting when we are talking to clients and potential clients is tying in his art. So this group of staff were going to have a theme for the year. They were pretty open-ended of like what that was going to be. Of course, something encouraging, uplifting. 
So they ended up pick, picking um, the cherry on top artwork of Jason's. You may have seen that with the mountain and the cherry. It's really a cool piece. And they decided to use that lesson in that art to kind of be their theme for the year of looking for the cherry on top of the experiences they're giving their clients. And um, so it was cool. They actually did this whole theme with like their gift bags, mm -hmm. right? Where everything was cherry themed. Yeah, they had... Uh, Which he was thrilled about. Yeah, I was totally happy about that. They actually sent us a, uh, sent a version us of it. Mm -hmm. um, they had uh, chocolate-covered cherries. They had cherry... They, well, they served breakfast to their people, and the people that couldn't be in the office, they delivered. And it was like cherry cherry muffins. Yeah, cherry and, muffins. Yeah. And there was a couple other cherry-related things that they, they mm -hmm. played with. There was but a that, cherry candle in the bag. And that's kind of one of the cool things about um, working with us, if we could toot our own horn, is that we, horn. we provide... Oh, <laughs> We provide easy theming, and that's one of my favorite things is when you're on a call with a client, and oh then gosh. you I'm so pass excited. them off to my portfolio, and you're like, well, we could do this, or we could do this. We could it's kind of like my kindergarten teacher side, you guys, coming out, because themes, of course, it's like, like thematic learning, right? At least it was 15, 20 years ago. And um, so the idea of like, oh, so you're thinking about doing something about, you know, I don't know, name a word, like stepping into the future. It's like that I go into his portfolio and I look at all the art that kind of goes into like what, you know, what images kind of represent that. Um, some of the, the themes are pretty challenging. Lame. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say what it is, right? But the, that's Theme creative by committee. for me. Yeah, they put every buzzword you could possibly have into this four-word theme. But that's a, it, it kind of gets me being creative of like, okay, so that's a terrible theme, but how can we make it fun? And then you can and use then that excited. in your publicity, in your online promotion, in the materials and the tank cards and signs and everything else. So it's so fun. Well, and the important part of that is and that helps – Cement the message, yeah. cement what, whatever the theme is, whatever the message is. And of course, we tie in with our presentation to try to, to um, bring that message front and center. And yeah. by bringing the visual in, because we remember visuals, um, if I tell you, if I say your grandma, you think of her, you think of a picture of her in your head. You don't think of anything else. So yeah. um, those visuals help cement the message and, and make the message sticky for weeks and months and years at a time. So mm -hmm. that's the uh, scientific <laughs> benefit, uh, but it's frankly just kind it's of just fun, fun too. Yeah, so. it's fun. And by the way, fun <laughs> is memorable. So um, yeah. So anyway, if you know of a group that is thinking about having either an in-person or virtual in the future, we're going to be doing both forever. I swear to you. So forever? I, well, I mean, I think even when I'm dead, well, that's not that's forever, like... forever stops when you're dead. Oh yeah. Okay. Did you know that? <laughs> I, i'll be in heaven i guess you well we're not gonna go to like this is getting pretty deep so anyway <laughs> <laughs> moving on life moves pretty fast you don't stop and look around once in a while you could miss it Ready for a fun fact about covid19 you know the virus you've been inundated with information and misinformation about for an entire year now that's wreaked havoc on a global scale? It has been recently calculated that all of the virus circulating the world right now could easily fit inside a single Coca-Cola can. Yep, British mathematician Kit Yates figured out there are around two quintillion, that's two billion billion, of the virus particles in the world at any one time. Even calculating the fact that the spherical shape and spiky proteins would leave gaps when they stacked them together, they'd still fit easily into a single soda can. Yates said in a statement, it's astonishing to think that all the trouble, the disruption, the hardship, and the loss of life that has resulted over the last year could constitute just a few mouthfuls. Astonishing indeed. But it goes both ways. Just as one very small thing can unleash an enormous amount of devastation, so too can something small lead to an astonishing amount of good. One of Fred Rogers' earliest jobs was as a puppeteer for a local children's show in Pittsburgh. The Simpsons started out as a bumper sticker on the Tracy Ullman show. Michael Dell sold his first computers out of his college dorm room. Eunice Kennedy Shriver started the Special Olympics in her backyard. 
and the missionaries of charity, which now consist over 4,500 sisters active in 133 countries, started with one humble woman helping one poor person. It's astonishing to think of all the opportunity, progress, and positive impact that change lives that can come out of very small actions. People who are burdened with glorious purpose, the ones intent on changing the world, started small. And they often look a little foolish at first, but purpose mixed with tiny actions is very powerful. All the big world-changing things had humble beginnings. John S. Pemberton was a pharmacist and a colonel in the Confederate Army during the Civil War who was trying to find a safe substitute for morphine when he invented Coca-Cola. Let the naysayers laugh and the doubts roll off your back. You are not too small to make a dent in the universe. I was gonna, I didn't wanna distract you, but I was gonna look back there to see if uh, Mr. Rogers, and he He's did, there. but I not the sure. one with the puppets. No. We have several Mr. Rogers. Yeah, the yeah there's a couple different but Mr. We, it's Rogers. It's hard keeping track of them all. Yeah. Um, but those are good examples. And, you know, I the thought of the Special Olympics starting in someone's backyard, I mean, that is one of those things where you're like, oh, what well, can you start this year or tomorrow, right? That could be something that could last, that could have such name recognition as the Special Olympics. I know, right? Right? And, I mean, you could, you could think of anything. I mean, like any brand, any company, any movement, even the Make-A-Wish Foundation, yeah. which we've been very involved with, started off in Arizona with just one one wish, wish, one idea mm-hmm. that someone wanted to help out this kid and yeah. give him their special wish. I think it was a, a little little guy who wanted to be a police officer yeah. or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was awesome. The you police, know? Yeah, the police force heard his story and was like, and it just happened naturally. It was like, oh, you know, this kid's going through a rough time. Let's see if we can give this kid a cool experience. And from that single wish, the whole Make-A-Wish Foundation was born. Yeah. Um, so you never know what little idea, that little spark, that little whisper you have that's kind of gnawing at you of like, man, should I do something about that? Right? Yeah. And not only, you know, it's not about starting a company or right. an organization necessarily. It's just, you never know like that little um, smile, that little extra effort you make with a person who's having a rough day, yeah. how that can create a ripple effect. I remember uh, there's a really cool commercial that I'm sure some of you have seen where, uh, I don't know if it's for a bank or credit card company or financial something and it's like this series of people doing something kind like oh, some lady drops yeah. something and another That's guy right. picks it yeah, up and then ago, right? someone helps that guy and it's like this really cool chain reaction and yeah. it, that in that case it started with just one person doing one nice thing for someone else so right. um, and I Paul, think it's, Paul says um, Arizona Department of Public Safety yep. nice yeah yeah I mean that is so amazing that something that again we all know as this amazingly huge impactful organization is just just started with one idea yeah jane says thank you i needed to hear this uplifting positive message well thank you jane that's what we do here or at least we try (laughs) uh we try to uh to bring light to others and uh paul used to work there what oh man paul says i used to work at the arizona uh public department of public Public safety (laughs) and that's where make wish started wow that's cool cool is that uh interestingly paul was the police officer that started it all (laughs) interesting interesting you might remember (laughs) last week in our fab five we talked about a game called Interesting Facts, where you say things in a snooty voice that are not true. At all. <laughs> and and we were actually I'm doing this. Very good at this. We games. did this at the, uh, the, the, the zoo, zoo the other yeah. day. And what was the one? What was the lame one you had? <laughs> Even Lucy was like, I I was not coming up with believable. Lucy informed me that they have to be somewhat believable facts. I just kind of pulled something out of the air and it was like totally unbelievable. She's like, no, mom, you have to have it be like you could almost believe it. So that's a little quick thing. Well, and also (laughs) I think the one you said wasn't interesting. It was also like the (laughs) zoo is is, has a 50% off sale today. Is like, it's interesting to people who are looking to save a few dollars. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting is subjective, right? Meanwhile, I think I'm proud of mine. It was, uh, oh, oh. <laughs> in- interestingly, the uh, oh. vehicles that transport Culver's food to their different restaurants are powered by oil from frying cheese curds. <laughs> All right, do we have to do this? Come on, you know. What is like, there involved? 
<laughs> lame versus good? I don't know why. I just want to see people put Team Kim up. Well, so that's all. Now I you're mean. just begging. Now it's it's really gotten sad, folks. I'm sorry. Kelsey loves saving money. It's interesting. <laughs> I'm it's sorry you have to see this. <laughs> this is a shame. But I think we need to we need to bring things back on track. Thank you, Julie. A, Thank you. I knew I knew I'd get a Team Kim. Just shameless. I love you guys. Shameless. I love you. <laughs> I want someone to say Team Jason. All right, what's our next segment here? I think we need to turn this back on track and get some drawing going. <laughs> All right, friends, I am excited about this one tonight. Um, we're going to draw, this is, this is going to be a really, this is going to be a good one. And I love, this one is going to be open-ended okay. so that people who draw along with us and send it in, I can't wait to see how you put your twist on it. All right. Um, so this is the, the Let's Draw segment of the show. This is show number 41. So we have, this will be 41 episodes or segments that are on our YouTube channel um, where you can find all of these, where we... Draw something yes. step by step. You don't have to be a famous artist or even a good artist. You just have to follow along one one line. And if line you go right time. to that playlist, you can push um, watch all or whatever the however it says, and just do them all if you need a little catch up. So, yep. okay. Right. So here's what we're gonna start. We're gonna start with kind of a uh, upside down U shape. Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay. And then I'm going to draw a line here and a smaller line on this side. Okay. Then I'm going to draw a line up here like this. Okay. Looks like a toaster. It does look, <laughs> look like a toaster. Uh, then we're going to draw, let's see, what should we do next? Let's do another line right here. Okay. <laughs> this is just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Now we're gonna draw a line here and a line here, and then we're gonna connect this one, the little the line there. Okay. Then I'm gonna draw another little upside down U, like that. Ooh, Julie okay. guessed. Fisher Price little person. Mm, that was interesting. A guess. Kelsey yeah. with igloo. igloo. Okay. Mm. Then let's see. Let's do this line like that. And then I'm going to draw two lines down here. Okay. Now we're going to take this and do a line there. And now it's there coming together, come. isn't it? Yep. Helen, so Julie, put a little eye Mindy. here. Mm -hmm. Put a couple little hash marks down here for the trunk. Oh, that's cute. And a couple little uh, bumps down here for his little toes. His or her, I don't know. Jane says, the elephant and the bird behind you. Yay. <laughs> then we got to put a little tail in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then for this uh, bird dude, I'm just gonna take a little, do a little line like this. Okay. Ooh. And then I'm gonna draw. You remember when you used to like draw little um, turkey, turkey feathers? Oh, That's yeah. what I'm gonna do. Or like a little hand with three fingers on yeah. it. Yeah. And it's the little feathers. Okay. And then I'm gonna draw a couple triangles. This bird. Oh, he's cute. I'm gonna put a little eye in there. Then I'm gonna put a little line around the eye just to give him a little character. And I'm gonna give him a little uh, curly cue up here. All right. Now this is the open-ended part. That's gonna be fun. Is I'm gonna draw a little speech bubble. Mm. Ooh. This guy has something to say. I like his little curly thing on top. All right, I don't even want to do that. Anymore. Kelsey says, mine looks more like an anteater. And then Kara <laughs> says, me too. And Jody, me too. That's all right. Hi, That's why you can watch them over again. You can you can practice. So I'm just going to put a little, uh, little musical note in here. Mm -hmm. But you could have him say something. You can have him sing something. Um, That's what I want to see. What does this little guy need to be saying? But uh, he's definitely 
It's a fun one. Burdened with glorious purpose, which is uh, uh if you don't if you're not familiar with that line, that comes from the Avengers. And uh there's it's a line that Loki says in the very first Avengers movie, and I've always been smitten by that line, especially his Delivery. his cocky boldness of it. <laughs> like I'm burdened with glorious purpose. He's a good character. Uh, yeah. However, I think uh in many ways we're all burdened with glorious purpose. That's that's why we're here. And it may not um, result in something famous or huge or anything like that, but it's about these little little small things we do that help make a difference, make a dent in the universe. I'm going to go with a little blue for this guy. <laughs> Rachel says, my bird is quite a bit larger than my elephant, <laughs> so my elephant is definitely burdened. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of like when you give a piggyback to one of your children and you're like okay you're too big for this <laughs> right all right so there we go these are a little cute little i love dude. this one i love the pink background too and i'm gonna give this guy a little bit of a little shade in here a little highlight just at the very top hmm. and on the side maybe right there all right of course, Stephen. How did you do that, Stephen? Burdened. <laughs> How did you do that? That is just, you have such an eye for that. Or an he's, ear or a brain or whatever. He's, he's good like that. I know. Speaking of Stephen, he kicks off our uh, our segment tonight of showing uh, little uh, pictures that people have drawn from past segments. And this was Bring a little back the shine, shine on, on action with the, the Legos that we drew last week. Um, great job there. Beth Ann Pierce Davis Very also cool. drew some little dudes. Uh, you can see she's watching the show there and she's got, I think it was like a little, little guy running away. I think that was when I was showing the, uh, what the little, uh, nubbins. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what they're called. I the studs. parts of the know. Lego, the little yes. circle things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Showing what those look like. So good job on that. Nice. Uh, then we got some old ones that we oh, wanted to share. That, Lola. Lola, this little Lola the cat is freaking adorable. Makes me want to draw this one again. Oh my gosh, you guys, he's so. That's cute. what I'm talking about. Right? That's pretty. Aww. That's pretty great. And then uh, I think we had another. Oh yeah, Julie. Yes. Uh, painted this um, for nice her grandson. Job. I think that she said. Really cool. I love uh, that. That was that was a while back too, but that looks really cool. I like. I like. Her nephew, I think. Nephew, yeah. was it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's cool. Yes. Good work, guys. Good work. Um, so if you drew your elephant and bird tonight and would like to send it in um, at any time, because as you can see, we're open to sharing drawings from previous yeah, episodes. Right. Um, send it to kj at escapeadulthood.com. We'll both be able to see it and look at it, and uh, you might end up on next week's show. What do we have? Meme We've of the week. Meme of the week. If you see this bin floating, you have been inside for too long. It's just a wet spot on the pavement. Oh, I would add a disclaimer to that is if you see a bin floating, it means you've been watching the show <laughs> regularly. It's levitating. Uh, hat tip to Jenna who sent this one to that's me. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, that's a fun that trick to try. with your head. Especially in the, in the spring it. now when you'll mm -hmm. come across a little wet puddle, do a little photo like this, just step a little bit back from it. I've seen people do this on the beach and stuff. It's kind of a fun. Yeah. Yeah, your brain totally what messes is up. But, it's just uh, floating there. That it's so the cool. most, it's the whimsiest garbage can you've ever seen. I guess. Just needs a little smiley face on it. That's <laughs> all. Uh, okay, so this week, our uh, adultitis fighting tip is illuminate your calendar. Uh, one of the things that they used to do in the olden times, like medieval times, is they used to have people who would illuminate manuscripts. So they would write out everything by hand. This was before they had, you know, printing presses. And uh, they would imagine? illustrate the margins and um, parts of the, the manuscript just by hand. And they would do these beautiful things. And of course, when the printing press did come along, that still 
still kept, but it was a way to illustrate the books in this beautiful way. I, I can picture like certain books from my childhood that yeah, had like that kind Mother of Goose style. Yes, and stuff. right, yeah. right. So and it was kind of a it was kind of a lost art. However, we are encouraging you that you should resurrect it in kind of a unique way, and it's basically illuminating your calendar. And, and so tell is, us about yes. Carolyn, because she she sent us a picture for something, and yes. we saw this in the background, and we were like, what yeah, is going on? Yeah, we asked our Wonder and Whimsy Society members to take a picture with their badge, so you get a badge with your member number on it, and we were going to be talking about the doors opening again, and so I said, "Get you know, send us a picture of you and your badge. And Carolyn did, but she happened to be in her... Um, whatever room this hangs in, it looked like maybe a kitchen. And she, that was in the background. And I was like, what is happening with your celebrate everything calendar, Carolyn? And she was so sweet because she was like, oh yeah, did you see it? And she was so cute about sharing what in the world she's got going on here. I'm sure your eyes are just like mine were the first time I saw it where you're like scanning and you're like, what? Is, that's familiar. What is this? What is this? So I uh, after a few emails, I learned a little bit more, and this talented, whimsical, creative heart, Carolyn, and I know you're here tonight, um, I, we are so inspired by you. So basically what she's doing is she's you know creating this opportunity for a little whimsy and creativity. So she, she said she uses Pinterest to get a lot of ideas for her sketches, um, and oftentimes she'll kind of merge a couple different drawings together but as you can see some of the the pictures she did kind of illustrated the celebration of the day so you, at towards the end of the month it was like international lego day um there's certain ones in there that i noticed was like oh yeah that's tied to that other things she said she's just kind of being really spur of the moment with this so the idea of like it had tied into something she did that day or some like a little journey she went on and a couple went into two days and whatnot um, and so she's like, there's no rhyme or reason. That's part of this. The whimsy of the random spontaneity is what I'm enjoying. And so for fact, for March, she said she's going to try to use the let's draw drawings for each day, except for a couple special ones that she wanted to commemorate in other ways. But, um, so she is just like a bundle of inspiration here, you guys. Well, here's a close up. She did use, uh, this was last week's drawing from let's draw. So mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I love this. And th this is just something she started this year, yeah. you know? And she said she uses markers, colored pencils, crayons, whatever. So she's just kind of enjoying the spontaneity. And like she said, she kind of does her life that way. It's like, there's no rules here. Let's just kind of see what where the whimsy takes her. And that this is kind of an illustrated version of that. So. Well, I love it because it's, it's uh, got a built-in constraint. And that's one of the things with creativity I've talked about before mm -hmm. is that when you have all of the options available to you, it's actually harder to face a blank page. So starting with some sort of a constraint um, can get the creativity flowing. And so an example is this new painting series I'm working on using the lyrics to Here Comes the Sun. I started looking at them closer and all of a sudden, just like looking at the different verses, I was like, oh, that, could, that gives me an idea for this. This gives me an idea for this. So taking one song and starting there. Here, she's taking little tiny boxes. So you can't get super detailed no. with it and it doesn't take that long so you can keep up on a daily thing so i love this idea i wanted I to, to share this uh illuminated calendar is a great uh, great idea thank you carolyn for continuing to inspire us and we're just i mean just to see that visual i'm sure i, I see the comments blowing up here of like i what this is so cool so hopefully that will inspire some creativity that maybe you weren't expecting Okay, you guys, it's time for a giveaway, and in order to win, all you have to do is answer this question. If you had to choose an animal as your primary mode of transportation, what would it be? This mm. little bird has chosen an elephant. <laughs> uh, and it made me think, like, if that was, you know, if you had your commute, or you had to go to the grocery store, or you had to go on vacation, or wherever, whatever your primary mode of transportation is, um, what would be the animal that you would pick? You, you got one? I think a cheetah. A cheetah? Yeah. Oh, you're in, because that, you you're, get there don't fast. Don't waste any time. I, they go over 70 miles an hour. so that The problem with cheetahs, though, is they're very <laughs> oh, for short bursts. Yeah, that's a good as point. As we've learned and with our daughter. Not able to. They can do it for a few seconds. Yeah. 
and then they got to pull. It's almost like an electric car. You lose, you lose your charge, <laughs> and then you got to no. But uh, then maybe if you plan out which animals per what kind of errands you're running, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, I'm going to be in there for a couple hours. Yeah. So. <laughs> the cheetah reminds me. We were at our, uh, we went to our niece's three year old birthday party the other day, and uh, I don't even know if it was her or someone else. It might have been her, Molly, and uh, she. <laughs> She ran, you know, to the other room, and we were talking about like, what? Wouldn't you love to just be a kid again, where you just run everywhere? You just, and it, she was not in, like, not going for anything. Just, no, just you know how kids do that? They just running. run to the other side of the room. They just run to the other side of the room, and then it's like, <laughs> man, to have that energy again. So that reminds me of Cheetah. Would be, would be. Yeah, good. and and um, by the way, last week's winner was Amy Payne. So congratulations to Amy. And this week you will win this very comfortable. Ten dollar gift card to the lemonade stand, um, and oh, there she yeah. Amy says she got her uh, comfy and gift some card. Other yeah. <laughs> some other goodies. Um, it, am I doing a spoiler alert if I mention to the Wonder Whimsy Society members that there's some new stuff up there? Is that no? It's there. Okay, so if you're a Wonder Whimsy Society member, uh, this guy did a little work and put some extra goodies in the what do we call that like member only section Swag. yeah yeah you have to be a member of the wonder whimsy society to get access to that so if you haven't checked that out it's probably up and up for 24 hours so yep. um, if you haven't checked in 24 hours there's new stuff so that's exciting but let's see what kind of animals we have well coming helen in here. not a surprise said horse and i say not a surprise because she was our adultitis fighter of the month we talked about her last week and she uh she imagines the cool walking by the horses. beach being yeah. on a horse on the beach right uh, paul was with you with the cheetah right there's gotta be some perks can't go wrong there sharon yeah. i like this i i was mm. considering a dinosaur of some sort she's on the same same uh era kind of yeah that's uh, cool. saber tooth tiger uh, Tracy says, "Why penguin? Of course, you just of waddle course, along." Penguin, of course. You know? uh. <laughs> Kelsey's got a disclaimer: cheetah or turtle, depending uh, on if I want to go fast or slow. Good points. Carolyn, there's Carolyn Narwhal. Uh, Look Carolyn, at that. you're Look here. That. Yeah, I hope you saw all the love, Carolyn. How about uh, emu? Oh, that would be okay. that's pretty creative Doreen. i love that she did emu and not ostrich she's very right. specific that is very specific uh we got bald eagle that would nice. be fun Soren. yeah i was curious if people would like allow themselves to be shrunk down because that that counts yeah you know, okay do you want to ride a hummingbird that would be <laughs> kind of fun that'd be kind of neat Boy, uh, how about a stork uh -huh. i already made that trip <laughs> we all, we all make that trip mom. once <laughs> Uh, another eagle. Oh, Lisa's nice. cool with the elephant. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I would definitely. And then like we could go elephant. fictional hippogriff. Nice. That's... Who says that's fictional? Right. I don't think Stephen would. Uh, how about <laughs> an, an unsure sheep would be a soft, Ooh, fluffy ride. I like that, Jane. That's very specific. That's the way you think. Yeah. That's a luxury like that. ride right there. <laughs> uh, Carolyn's daughter said a songbird. Oh, that's like built-in radio, built-in Spotify. Right, I love that. Uh, orca mm -hmm. to cross waters. Ooh, that'd be powerful. Um, mm -hmm. What else we got? Uh, You'd be able to see such beautiful sights out there. Oh my gosh! Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, Jen also whale mm -hmm. and going by water. Mm -hmm. How about a giraffe? You could walk over things and see what's going on. I and they are the coolest. They are the coolest. I've, I've always, I've, I've kind of. I guess I did. <laughs> I've kind of pictured myself riding a giraffe, and that, that slanty back would be tough. Yeah, you need a You'd special have to saddle. saddle. Yeah, we saddle get, up. Let's figure that out, Mary Beth. Uh, the never-ending story dragon. That's Ooh, a good one. Have you ever seen that? A long time ago. I say we might yeah. need to have that it's be a movie time. night coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, unicorn. That would be like that. Mm -hmm. Triceratops. Nice. Yeah, like little, yeah. Like hold you can hold on. Hold on. Little, yeah, like that. Uh, Kelsey says running is the only way my kids right? move. What is with this? Yeah. Don't they know they should save some of that energy for when they're in their 40s or 50s or 60s? <laughs> Does Steve, it work that way? Steve meant to say unicorn might be good. Yeah, but I, 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 I'd I gotcha. say it's gold. It's uh, it'd, be, it'd be good. Uh, Ooh, Pegasus. That Pegasus. Cool. Squares. Oh, yeah. Mike. Mike says Pegasus. About Roadrunner. Road beep, beep. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I like this yeah. one. Pterodactyl. Ooh, yes. Uh, what else? What else? A lot nice. of comments here tonight. This Big is great. Bigfoot. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. 
Ben would love that. He's really yes. into Bigfoot right yes. now. That's a big deal in yeah. his life. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, what are those white creatures in the early Star Wars movies? Oh. Hmm. Not sure which one she's talking about. Like the what do I think? Like Wampas or something? Yeah, I guess it depends what she means by early. If she means prequel, would, and if she means the prequel, oh. or if she means the first New Hope, which came out first. The ones that came out in the seventies, I think, is how I'd interpret yeah, that. I have a, yeah. a block, but I, I, whatever it is, I wampas? agree. Wait, <laughs> listen to you. What Star Wars? What's nerd? a wampa? That's like the big snow creature. That, that's yeah. what she's talking yeah, about. That could be. Oh, okay. I, I said okay. it could be. I don't well, know. Okay. I was just having this Taun moment. The Tauntaun? Yeah, the Tauntaun oh, might be tauntaun. it. Tauntaun, yeah. They, uh, I thought they smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, keep those coming in. We will pick out a, uh, a winner here in a little bit and uh, be in touch with you. We'll announce it next week on the show. Yes. Um, before we get out of here, we've had a lot, a lot of people ask us about the Escape at All Hood Summit. And uh, we do not have any news to report yet. Yes. However, we are in touch with uh, some lo a location about the possibility of hosting a summit in person in August. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Uh, we were, uh, as many people, we had to postpone last year's. So we have a number of people who kept their tickets and will have first chance to come to this one. Um, if we have it, mm -hmm. um, we're hoping to have it. We'll say that, right? We're oh, hoping yeah. to have it. We're, yeah. we're planning. We're trying to figure out how to make it happen. It looks promising, but we don't have any details yet, which is why you need to be an insider. Uh, if you are not already, subscribe at escapeadallhood.com slash insider. Um, you will be among the very first people to know when and if tickets drop. Right? By the and way, find out backing up a step here, is there any opportunity to maybe, maybe we should say what an Escape at All Hood Summit is <laughs> for those of you who are like brand That's new, probably a good idea. right? So we have had, I think, eight summits or was it going to be our eighth? I think it was going to be our eighth. I think it was going to be our eighth last year. Um, but so we've had seven almost annual summits. That, that word is no longer appropriate for most events now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's our, our yearly or a, a, a big event that we have once a year to gather adultitis fighters together in the same place. And I have to tell you, usually it's about two days long. Um, it is amazing. And it is not, I, it's almost easier to tell you what it is not. A lot of people are like, is this just like a clown convention or... You know, like has camp? anyone ever asked that? Yes, I think so. Well, I mean, the venue that one time, the Ulbrich Gardens. Um, oh, that lady was not sure she what was to expect. Very she thought we were going to burn the place us. down with silly string. It was like <laughs> she literally asked okay. if we were going to have like wall velcro, and I'm like, no, no, but that's a great no. idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like, can we? Can do you allow for wall velcro? Um, so, long story short, it's not you know like this crazy, you know, intimidating thing. It really is just real people like us and you guys getting together and just being inspired by each other's stories and learning some new techniques for fighting adultitis, having fun. It's not like camp. A lot of people like think it's going to be like camp, like we're doing like slip and slides and stuff. It really isn't. It's people around tables doing fun things together, sharing cool things. We do have show and tell and we have talks that we give and um, very memorable moments that are made. So I hope you will consider the opportunity if it should arise. I hope it does. How about um, this? It's almost easier to tell you what it's not. Such a <laughs> up. Thank you for that, Teresa. I, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, but those of you, can anyone back me up for like the alumni of the summit? I think, it, you know, because it says Escape Adulthood Summit, there's a lot of like misconceptions of what this is. Jason and I are seriously introverts. Um, and I know that's hard for people to understand. Um, but this event is put on, well, and Rachel and Jenna are extroverts. So we're going to have a nice balance. Don't get me wrong. But the idea that this is something to be intimidated by is that should definitely not be. Um, something you consider if you're like, I don't know, I, I'm not that fun. I don't know if I should go, right? I yes. mean, we've gotten that before. Tracy's got a good uh, a good thing. Summit, inspiring, collaborative, fun, like-minded, positive people. Yes. 
that's, that's great. That sums it up mm -hmm. pretty good, I would say. And I would definitely say, uh, we, and it's a little bit recess. It it's is, like recess yeah. from your life. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Take a break from the day to day. And boy, do we all need it. And boy, do we want to see each other. So I think there, if it is physically possible and safe for us to do this, you guys, we're doing it because we are all missing you. We're missing each other, right? We miss you. We want to see your faces. So, Absolutely. Um, we want to see your eyes, even if we can't see your mouth. <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll take whatever we can get. Uh, I, this is good. Kristen says the most magical thing is not knowing much about it. There's an element of awe as the day rolls out. Yeah, we there are a lot of surprises that we yeah. kind of keep under wraps. A lot of magic. Um, Jane is wondering if we do it in the same city every year. Um, we question. have done it in the Madison area uh, mostly, uh, exclusively so far. But we've now since moved to Sheboygan, and um, there's a really, really cool resort right on Lake Michigan. I think Teresa might Sheboygan. know what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, it Teresa includes a water park, too. So that's a different thing we've never, never had before. Yeah. And uh, I like Wendy. Yeah. There probably will be bacon. Yes. And it's, cheese curds. We always promise bacon. cheese curds yes. every single time. So, um yeah, so anyway, just a, you know, oh, just talking about it. It's getting me excited. Yeah. Oh. Well, well, more to come, but you will be uh, you'll be on the inside if you are an insider. So uh, if you're not already a uh, subscriber, which I know a lot of you watching already are, but if not, tell a friend, tell a friend about this um, movement we have going on because um, it seems like every day someone new comes into the fold that's like, feels like they've been here forever. And it's just... We've got an awesome thing going, and uh, it's awesome because of the people who make it up. So yeah. uh, glad to have you on board. But you guys, that is it for this show. Until next time, Adult Dietist Fighters. Shine on, spread whimsy, and be awesome.